there, thrill seekers. I was asked in a question, who is Dogen? And I thought that was an interesting question because I've written extensively about Dogen. Uh, probably most people who watch this channel know this. But uh, I've put biographies of Dogen in several books. For sure, it's in Sit Down and Shut Up and Don't Be a Jerk. I think it's also, there's a little bio of him in my book, it came from Beyond Zen, and there's probably shorter biographies of Dogen in maybe every book I've ever written. But I don't think I've ever done sort of a biography of Dogen in one of my videos. So I'm going to see what I can do about that today. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, my favorite source for uh, Dogen's biography is uh, the book To Meet the Real Dragon. It's been reprinted in another cover. This is uh, Gudo Wafu Nishijima's sort of uh, only, well, it's not his only book. He's written, he wrote a lot of books, but this is his only sort of, you know, this is the one that's most similar to something like Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, where it's a compilation of talks and things. There's a couple other compilations out there. But that contains a little short biography of Dogen. Not much is known about Dogen's life, his biography. I just got the manuscript for Shohaku Okumura's new translation of Shobo Genzo's Wee Monkey, which is one of Dogen's main works. And if my eyeline is going funny, it's because I'm looking at the screen, which has... I only have this as a PDF, so i got to look at it on the screen. But according to... Okumura Roshi, much is unknown about the details of Dogen Zenji's life. Today, only a few short descriptions of his life written by his Dharma descendants are available. Examples include, and then he gives some examples, which you're probably not going to go look up, so I'll skip them. Uh, then he goes, we do not even know with certainty who his parents were. The oldest biography of his life, entitled Record of Kenzei, was written about 200 years after Dogen's death by Kenzei, who was a Dharma descendant of Dogen. And in the 18th century, uh, Menzen Zuiho revised this text and called it Revised Annotated Record of Kenzei. And that has been the major source of biographical information about Dogen ever since. That's the main one the Soto Shu uses, main one most people use. But it's it's quite a while after Dogen was gone. In his own writings, Dogen doesn't give a lot of his own biographical information, which is, you know, how Dogen differs from me. If you read my books, you get a lot of biographical information on me. I, you know, I throw it in there all the time, but Dogen didn't. It wasn't really the style. But one source you can go to, if you can find it, is Dogen's formative years in China. This is a translation of a thing called Hokyoki, which is uh, the record of the Hokyo era. It's Dogen's own writings about his journey to China, and that probably contains more biographical, autobiographical information than any other source. But it's really hard to find. When I was in Texas a few weeks ago, or a few, was it last month? Anyway, whenever I was in Texas, I was in Denton, Texas, at a place called Recycled Books and Records, and they had a copy of this. And I almost bought it just because it's so hard to find copies of it, and they had it priced at a reasonable price, like $10 or something. And, and I see these going on uh, Amazon for hundreds. So uh, if you're in uh, Denton, Texas, go to Recycle Books and, and uh, go get yourself a copy of that because <laughs> you're not going to find it again. So I'll just tell you what Nishijima Roshi tell, what says about him in this book and kind of I'll, I'll sort of read it to you and, and give you my little notes as I go along. Master Dogen was born in the year 1200, AD 1200. Uh, that's what he, that's, uh, he uses AD. There's a lot of controversy about whether to say AD or CE. I usually say CE just to be polite, but a lot of people stick to AD. Anyway, a time of confusion and change in Japan. The capital had recently been moved from Kyoto, where Master Dogen was born, to Kamakura, where the government was in the hands of the military, uh, meaning the samurai. But the royal court in Kyoto was still the center of wealth and power, and Master Dogen was born in the midst of its intrigues. His father was uh, Michichika Kuga, a powerful minister of the court, but his mother, while also of high birth, was not Michichika's legal wife. 
Apparently, she had become his mistress after her first husband was exiled. So while some aspects of Dogen's birth were promising, I think we can see seeds of the future misfortune in his circumstances. Uh, this, um, well, I'm going to keep reading it because uh, we say more. But one of the things I wanted to point out is since he was born in 1200, it's really easy to figure out how old he was when he wrote any of his, well, most of his pieces. Because most of the pieces he wrote for Shobogenzo and uh, Ehe Koroku and probably even Zui Monkey to a certain extent, are dated. So you can go, oh, you wrote this in 1231. He was 31. Easy. Easy peasy. When Master Dogen was only two years old, his father died quite suddenly. Now, that's... I'm going to stop there because that's interesting because in Shohaku Ukumura's little biography of Dogen that appears in the beginning of his new version of Zui Monkey, he does not, Okumura Roshi does not mention Dogen's father's death, which is part of every biography I've ever seen of Dogen. Rather, he throws in this funny line, which I'm just going to read to you, uh, about when, the, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but this is about when Dogen wanted to become a monk. Initially, Roken, who was uh, Dogen's uncle, uh, who, who, to whom un Dogen requested to become a monk, uh, asked him to reconsider because his father and foster father would be furious. But when Dogen stated his solid determination based on his mother's death, oh, sorry, we're skipping ahead. Uh, spoiler alert, Ryokan accepted him. Um, I point that out because uh, well, why does Okamura Roshi not mention Dogen's father's death when every other biography does and even implies that Dogen's father was alive when he became a monk? I don't know. <laughs> I should ask Okamura Roshi. Maybe I'll send him an email later and ask him why that is. But I'm going to say Dogen's father was dead, because that's always been part of the story. Uh, so as a result of his father's death, he became the ward of an elder brother who sent him and his mother to live in an isolated villa. There he spent the next five years, a lonely time during which he became devote, very devoted to his mother. He's said to have been an intelligent child who learned to read Chinese poetry at an early age. He, he was... Uh, apparently very highly educated, which was something only the upper classes could do in his day. So, but, but he read everything from an early age. When Master Dogen was seven, his mother became ill and died. Her, her death must have made a strong and lasting impression on him. Some biographers claim that through the passing of his mother, he profoundly recognized the impermanence of worldly life and the transitory nature of all things. There's a, a story in one of the biographies in which he's watching, Dogen is watching the smoke rise from his, the, um, his mother being cremated. And at that moment, he realizes the truth, or not realizes the truth, but realizes the truth of impermanence. And uh, that sets him off on his life to to be a monk, which sounds like the kind of thing they put in a biopic about Dogen rather than something that really happened, but, you know, who knows? Maybe it really did happen. Uh, they, they say that he resolved to be become a monk as a result of this experience, although Nishijima Roshi doesn't relate the exact experience, but here we go. In any case, when he was 12 years old, he ran away from his brother's house and went to Mount Hay, the center of Buddhist learning at the time. One year later, in spite of his family's objections, he became a monk at Enrakuji, a temple of the Tendai sect of Japanese Buddhism. So the Tendai sect of Japanese Buddhism is probably roughly close-ish to what we now call Tibetan Buddhism. It is, it is a it's similar to this kind of Buddhism they practice in Tibet, except without all of the... the um, interpolations, is that the word? The influence of the Tibetan Bon tradition. But it's very esoteric, it's very mystical, it's very colorful, and has a lot of philosophy and things um, to it. And a lot of explanations about things like what happens after you die and so forth. That's uh, kind of a hallmark of the Tendai Buddhism. At Enrakuji, Master Dogen quickly immersed himself in the study of Buddhist philosophy, but within a short time, a crucial tenet of that philosophy, the doctrine of Buddha nature, began to trouble him. He read the words of an ancient, in the words of an ancient sutra, Gautama Buddha said, All living beings, without exception, have Buddha nature. The perfect Buddha is eternal and without change. And that, that's the quote. And now we're back to Nishijima Roshi. If, as is said, Buddha nature is the eternal essence of all things, and if this essence is possessed by all people from birth, why then, Master Dogen wondered, is it necessary to study Buddhism at all? 
Why should we have to work so hard to attain the true nature we already have? That was Dogen's big question. Master Dogen took his question from one priest to another in the monastery, but to his surprise, none of them could understand the nature of his doubt. To them, Buddha nature was simply an idea, so they attempted to answer his question on theoretical grounds. But the young master was not satisfied with such answers. He had a very practical mind, so he wanted a practical answer, an answer which would resolve the problem in his real life. Finally, in frustration, he decided to leave the temple and seek his true master, a master who could answer his question without hesitation, a master who knew the Buddha nature itself. His search eventually took him to Onjoji, where he met Master Koin. The master was also unable to satisfy the young man, but he suggested that he visit a master named Esai, who had recently returned from China. Master Eisai, the founder of the Rinzai sect in Japan, was at that time the master of Keninji Temple in Kyoto. Uh, there is some controversy as to whether Master Dogen actually met Master Eisai, so the biographies are conflicting about that. But uh, we do know that he went to Keninji, and one biographer relates an interesting story about their meeting. Now, this story may or may not be apocryphal, but here it goes. He says that when Master Dogen met, met Master Asai, sorry, he immediately put to him his question about Buddha nature. In response, Master Asai said simply, I know nothing of so-called Buddhas of the past, present, or future. All I know is that cats and white oxen actually exist on this earth. That's the big answer there. Somehow this answer cut through Master Dogen's intellectual preoccupations, and he was able to see that it is reality that is important. Whether inspired by this direct answer or by some other aspect of the new Zen teachings of Master Asai, Master Dogen decided to stay at Kenyinji uh, to continue his training. Unfortunately, Master Asai died shortly after Master Dogen took up residence at the temple, so that part is chronologically uh, correct. We know that, but whether they actually met or not is sort of vague. Uh, so he became Dogen, so Dogen became the student of Master Myozen, Asai's successor. Master Myozen was an excellent teacher who sought after the truth very diligently. That line, I even what do you call that, marked with a post-it? Because I think that is interesting. The relationship of teacher and student in Zen is that they are both seekers of the truth. They're both people who are looking at the truth. So it is not that there is a truth that is possessed by the master and then the, he gives it to the student, he or she gives it to the student. It is that they are both working on this project of trying to get at the truth. Master Dogen was impressed by that sincere will to attain the truth, and he worked hard to follow his master's example. At Kenyinji, the traditional Tendai doctrines were taught alongside the Zen teachings brought from China by Master Eisai, but it was the latter, with their emphasis on the direct experience of reality, that had the most appeal for Dogen. So in those days, it was kind of a mixed thing. They hadn't yet kind of separated into different sects, so it was all taught at once. After more than nine years of strenuous study and practice, Master Dogen became convinced that if he were to ever penetrate to the core of Zen, he would have to journey to his source in China. And what this leaves out uh, is that Myo Zen gave Dogen Dharma transmission when Dogen was 21 years old. So Dogen was technically a master already, but he, Dogen, didn't really consider himself to, to have gotten it at that point. Uh, Master Myozen was also taken by the idea, and so in 1223 the two monks made the hazardous voyage to China together. Also left out of here is that it was probably Dogen's, whatever was left over his, of his family wealth that he still had access to that allowed him to go to China. So, you know, he had some, he had some money uh, back in those days before he became a poor, desolate monk. At first, Master Dogen found China a disappointment. Ugh, I'm disappointed by that helicopter. Hold on. All right, helicopters moved. Uh, he, Dogen, visited many temples but found their masters were more concerned with wealth and position than with practice. He had almost decided to give up his search when he met an old man who told him about Master Tendo Nyojo, a.k.a. Tiantong Ryujing, depending on if you're, that, that would be the Chinese pronunciation. Chinese and Japanese uh, often pronounce the uh, characters used in people's names different ways, so that's why you find his, this guy referred to as Ryujing and sometimes as, as Nyojo. 
Uh, that's uh, Dogen's master, a famous priest who had recently become the master of Tendozan Kei Tokuji. That's a temple. Uh, the old man's eagerness to have him meet Tendo Nyojo, that's the guy who told Dogen about Tendo Nyojo, uh, convinced Master Dogen to visit the temple. At their first encounter, Master Dogen felt intuitively that Master Nyojo was the true master for whom he had been searching for a long time. Master Nyojo, in turn, felt that young Japanese monk standing before him was just the man he had been waiting for to carry on his teachings. So Master Dogen became a disciple of Master Nyojo, and within a rather short time his doubts were cleared away. He understood the real basis of Buddhist theory and realized the truth with his whole body and mind. Four years after coming to China, Master Dogen received the formal transmission of Buddhist teachings from Master Nyojo. So this is the second Dharma transmission he received. And so took his place in the direct line of masters that stretches back to Gautama Buddha, and he was 27 years old. Uh, he uh, came back to, to Japan at that point, and one of the first things he did was he went to Kenninji Temple, where he had been studying before, but he found that he, he felt that they'd lost their way, and, and uh, he wasn't really interested in that, so he kind of went off by himself for a while and composed, started writing. Uh, he composed Fukan Zazengi when he was 27, in 1227, which is his explanation of how to do Zazen, basically, but it's more detailed than that, and I've talked about it on this uh, video channel a few times. And then he produced a work called Bendoa, which contains a big Q&A section about uh, Zen practice. Both of those, by the way, can be found in my book, Don't Be a Jerk, uh, my little paraphrases of them. And then he later established a temple in the outskirts of Kyoto, and then the, the story gets a little vague. He was, for some reason, kind of felt pushed out of Kyoto, which was then the capital of Japan, to Echizen province, which is now called Fukui Prefecture, and he established a temple called Eheji, which is the Temple of Eternal Peace, which still exists, and uh, that was the place where he lived for the rest of his life. He became ill when he was about 52 years old and apparently tried to get over it, but he couldn't. Eventually went back to Kyoto for treatment, but it was too late, and he died when he was 53 in the year 1254. I guess he hadn't quite reached his birthday. J Japanese people count uh, the years uh, that the years old people are differently. Sometimes you're counted as being one year old when you're born. Actually, most Japanese people I know these days don't do that, but in Dogen's day, that was the way it was done. Anyway, it gets confusing, but he died young, is the point. Uh, 53, probably more people died at 50, in their 50s in, in Japan in those days than do today, but it was still young to die. Uh, and uh, he left this legacy, he left this temple behind and the temple flourished and produced a lot of sub-temples, and Dogen was a revered figure among what became known as the Soto Shu, the Soto sect of Zen Buddhism in Japan, and it became the largest and most popular form of Zen Buddhism in Japan. However, interestingly enough, not a lot of people read Dogen's work. He wrote this huge book, which I've referenced so many times on this video channel. I, I, I hope everybody knows what it is, but it's called Shobo Genzo, The Treasury of the True Dharma I. But that book was not widely read between Dogen's death in 1250, did I say 53 or 54, whatever year it was, uh, until the 20th century. It, it, of course, there were a few people who read it, and it was preserved, and it was revered as a relic, but what happened is, in the late 19th century, during the Meiji Restoration, when Japan decided they'd fallen way behind the West due to their centuries of isolation, which ha began after Dogen had died, but continued on until the 19th century, uh, they decided to follow the West, and one of the things they did in order to westernize was that the Japanese government decided that every religion, to legitimize itself, had to have a book. You know, in, because in the West we had the Bible and the Quran and the Torah, and, and these were books upon which religions were based. Well, Buddhism doesn't tend to be like that. There's no one book 
of Buddhism. I, I remember when I was first interested in Buddhism, one of my questions is like, what's the Buddhist equivalent of the Bible? And there isn't one. There is a book these days you can find here and there called the Buddhist Bible, but it's not really. It's, it's more of a compilation of famous Buddhist writings. So there was no sort of canonized literature. Well, what the Soto Shu decided to do was say that Shobo Genzo, the book that Dogen had written, was now going to be their, their Bible. And that sparked a lot of interest in Shobo Genzo, especially among academics who started writing about it. And by the 20th century, it was becoming more disseminated. And that's when my teacher, Gudo Wafu Nishijima, discovered it was in the early 20th century in, in, um, when Shobo Genzo started to become widely popularized in Japan. And that's when Nishijima Roshi came across it. So I always find that interesting that this great book had kind of just been sitting in on a shelf somewhere, not being read by anybody for the first eight, almost 800 years of its, its, its existence. So that's who Dogen was. So I think that's, that's ah, I realized I talked really fast and crammed a lot of information. And as I said, uh, To Meet the Real Dragon contains a biography of Dogen. Also, here's another book that I have in an old cover that's been reproduced in a new cover, Moon in a Dewdrop. This is Kazuaki Tanahashi's book. It tends to be a little easier to find than Nishijima Roshi's book. It also contains a little biography of Dogen at the beginning. If you want to go look at it, look for it at a Barnes & Noble or wherever books are sold and, uh, and get yourself a copy. So there is the fastest, shortest version of the life of Dogen I've ever given. And if you want to uh, send me more money to buy books about Dogen, you can go to the URL you are seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main way and pretty much only way of making a living. So I appreciate your support, but as always, this is offered for free, so you don't gotta donate if you don't wanna donate. And we will see you next time. Have a good time, all the time. Be hopeful. That's, that's what Rick 9G, the guy who makes videos about old uh, TV shows, always says on his videos. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Bye. Hey Ziggy, where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, where are you going Ziggy? Ziggy, you came back. Hi. Oh, I need to take your walkie collar off you. Oh, you're barking at our father-in-law because he's working on the shutters over there. Ziggy, say hi to the folks. <laughs>